for the last few days we are discussing the theories of bonding in coordination compounds and today we are discussing the third theory that is crystal field theory actually this theory was proposed by the physicist hans bethe in 1929 and to this theory is to describe the bonding in coordination complexes and also to rationalize and to predict uh, some of the important properties of the coordination complexes such as its color its magnetism uh, which is not clearly discussed in the earlier theory such as uh, vbt and other the sidwick theory and this model was uh, actually uh, or it is purely based on the interaction between the ligands and the metal ions that is in the complex and with the various geometries uh, like octahedral tetrahedral square planar etc that means that this theory or this model is purely based on the interaction between the ligands and the metal ion in that complex and this theory uh, or this proposed theory um, had some changes or modifications uh, by van bleck in 1935 Uh, in order to allow for some covalency in the interaction that means in order to prove some certain covalency in the interaction and actually this theory is based on the concept that when a negative charges of the incoming ligands or the negative ends of the mol- dipolar molecule like ammonia water then attract the positively charged metal ion and there is also a repulsive interaction between the d electrons present in the metal ion and the ligands and that means the negative charge of the incoming ligands will attract the positively charged metal ion so definitely when a negative charge approaches the metal ion there is a possibility of the repulsive interaction between the d electrons present on the metal ion that means that this repulsive interaction is in between the electrons that is present in the metal ion and with the negative charge of the ligands so this is the basic uh, theory of this concept and that we will discuss through certain postulates so next we can discuss what are the postulates of this crystal field theory or otherwise called the cft actually this theory consists of uh, consists of uh, nine postulates and the first postulate is that the central metal atom or the central metal ion in the complex is surrounded by ligands to form the complex that we already know the ligand is surrounded with the metal ion, metal atom or the metal atom is surrounded by certain ligands and it forms the complex and there are two types of ligand and that is given in the postulate 2 it consists of a point charge ligands or the di, uh, point dipole ligands and the third postulate is that the bonding between we know that as the ligand approaches uh, the metal ion the bonding between the metal cation and the ligand arises due to the electrostatic interaction so here the electrostatic interaction is in consideration that means the bonding between the ligands and the metal cation is exactly due to the electrostatic interaction and this we can say that the bond bond between the metal and ligand is purely ionic why just because they are they arises due to the electrostatic interaction therefore the bond between the metal and ligand is purely ionic so there is also another possibility the next postulate is given that as the interaction between the electrons of the metal cation we know that the electrons are seen in the d orbitals of the metal cation so that e- electron has an interaction to those of the ligands uh, is entirely repulsive that means the ligand has a negative charge and the electrons that is present in the d orbitals of the metal cation as also having negative charge so there is a possibility of the uh, repulsion and these repulsive forces are responsible for the splitting of the d orbital of the metal cation so these metal cation the d orbitals of the metal cations will split just because of this uh, repulsive forces between the d electrons in the metal cation and those of the negative charge of the ligand so i will read once again the interaction between the electrons of the metal cation and those of the ligand is entirely repulsive so just because of these repulsive forces or these repulsive forces are responsible for the splitting of d orbital of the metal cation so this splitting is a new term that is introduced in the cft so this is a splitting and the next postulate is given that as a d orbital which are degenerate in free metal ion 
how their degeneracy destroyed by the approach of ligand during the formation of a complex as we know that for the metal cation all the d electrons are in a degenerate state that means they all are in the same energy state but as soon as the ligand approaches to the metal ion the degeneracy will be destroyed so that is the uh, cause for the splitting uh, or it splitted into other energies so the d orbital which are already in the degenerate state in the free metal ion uh, means they have the degeneracy is destroyed they already have the degeneracy but as a ligand approaches its degeneracy is uh, destroyed by the approach of ligand that means as a as a complex is formed that means as a ligand approaches we know that the complex is going to form as the during the formation of a complex what is happening to that metal cation or the d orbitals of the metal cation the d orbital is getting splitted or its degeneracy is destroyed so we know that uh, how next we are discussing how they are going to split it or how how much extent it is going to be split it and we know that uh, the d orbitals as a five d generate or the it consisting of a d x y d y z d x and d x square minus y square and the d z square so that is given in the sixth postulate that is the central metal atom have five d generate orbital that is a d orbital what all are they they are d x y d y z d x z d x square minus y square and the d z square but all these will be in the degenerate state before the uh, approach of the ligand and this degenerate orbits are given here or the d x z d z square is is been like this and d x square minus y square this is d z square and this is d x square minus y square is like this between the uh, means uh, they are seen in on line the lobes are lying on the x axis and the y axis and for d x y d y z and d x z the lobes uh, lie in between the x and y axis or it lies in between the x and z axis or it will lie in between the y and the z axis so these are the five degenerate orbitals that we already know and how the splitting or to what extent it is going to split it that is given in the seventh postulate when the ligand approaches the metal ion due to the repulsive force the degeneracy of the d orbital is destroyed and they split into two groups of different energy levels so out of this five degenerate orbitals they are split into two different energy level and one level is a t2g energy level and other is the eg level so the splitting of the degenerate that means the splitting of the five degenerate d orbitals into two different groups of having different energy levels is called or this effect is called the crystal field splitting that means once again i will say the splitting of the degenerate orbitals into two different energy levels with the t2g and eg is called the crystal field splitting and this that means uh, as a definition we can say that the splitting of five degenerate d orbitals of the metal ion or the metal cation into into two sets of orbitals having different energy is called the crystal field splitting and this concept is the, actually the basis of the crystal field theory as uh, soon we will discuss uh, what uh, what all uh, what are the orbitals that is existing in the 2t t2g and the eg that we will discuss later and i am going to the next postulate that is the eighth postulate that means that it does not show the overlapping that means this theory does not show the overlapping it only uh, based on the splitting and the last one is from the crystal field stab stability energy the stability of a complex can be known so the stability of a complex according to the cft uh, is identified on the basis of the crystal field stabilization energy that means cfsc so what is cfsc actually it is a change in energy achieved by filling up electron in orbital in complex metal atom so these are the nine simple postulates of the cft that we want to study so this is the postulates of these are the postulates of the crystal field theory you just go through it and if you have any doubt ask me